Welcome, dear students. This is me, Dr. Ahmed Farid, Associate Professor of Anatomy and Embryology at Ain Shams University College of Medicine. In this video, we will discuss uh, the muscles of the back of the forearm, especially the superficial group, as regard the attachments and the actions. Uh, in this uh, animation, at the beginning, I wanted to enumerate the superficial group of the muscles of the back of the forearm. As we know that muscles of the back of the forearm are called the extensor compartment of the forearm. Muscles of the back of the forearm or extensor compartment are formed of two layers, superficial layer and the deep layer. In this video, we'll be concerned with superficial layer of the muscles of the back of the forearm. In order to memorize these muscles easily, I will enumerate it at first and I will tell you a way to memorize it in an easy way. Okay. Uh, let's look to this model as you see. At the beginning, we have three muscles are arranged at the radial side of the forearm or at the lateral side of the forearm and their name contains the uh, word radialis. The first one is called brachioradialis and the one just behind and medial to it is called extensor carpi radialis longus and the one next is called extensor carpi radialis brevis. So I have three muscles present on the radial side or lateral side of the forearm containing the word of radialis. Brachioradialis then extensor carpi radialis longus, then extensor carpi radialis brevis. After these three muscles, I will look to the dorsum or the back of the forearm. And as you see, the model is rotating with me now. I have another three muscles. They are concerned with the digits. First one from lateral to medial is called extensor digitorum, as you see, to control the medial forefingers. And medial to it, we have extensor digiti minimi for the little finger only. And finally, the most medial muscle in the superficial group of the back of the forearm is called the extensor carpi ulnaris. So we have three muscles on the dorsum of the forearm. Extensor digitorum, medial to it, we have extensor digiti minimi and most medial you have extensor carpi ulnaris. So now a total of six muscles are present on the back or the posterior or extensor compartment of the forearm. Don't forget one small muscle present just behind the elbow which is called anconius. So total of seven muscles are present at the superficial layer of the back of the forearm. Now we will discuss each muscle with its attachments briefly and will demonstrate the action we want to uh, uh, go again to the lateral side of the forearm to see our first three muscles which are brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis let's start by brachioradialis the common feature of all these muscles that they are originating from the common extensor origin which is the uh, uh, lateral epicondyle of the humerus or the bones around this area. So uh, in comparison to the flexor compartment of the forearm, the common flexor origin of the front of the forearm was the medial epicondyle, while the common extensor origin of the back uh, of the forearm is the lateral epicondyle or the bone surrounding it. Okay. Let's start by brachioradialis. If I wanted to look to the attachments of the brachioradialis, I will find it's attached to the following. I will show the muscle alone on the model. You will find the origin is from the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. As you see, we will make a zoom on the uh, uh, origin like this. So, it originates from the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Okay. And if we wanted to look to its insertion, we will go like this. Look, it's inserted into the lateral aspect of the radius just above the styloid process. Lateral aspect of the radius at the lower part just above the styloid process. So, 
If I want to approximate this insertion to the origin of the muscle, you will find it's present in the uh, 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 not completely in front and not completely back, and it crosses both elbow joint and radio ulnar joints. So the first action will be flexion of the elbow joint, as you see, and it's most active in the mid prone position. This is our first action of brachioradialis flexion of the elbow joint especially at the mid prone position the other action so simply is initiation of both subination and the pronation initiation of both subination and the pronation because its position is at the supracondylar ridge so it's not completely anterior to the radio ulnar joint or posterior to the radio ulnar joint. So this position enables it to initiate or begin either pronation and subination. Okay. The second muscle we have, as you see, after brachioradialis is extensor carpi radialis longus. Extensor carpi radialis longus. When we look to the attachments of this muscle, we'll find it. Let me show it first. So this is the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle. It originates also from the supracondylar ridge, but below the brachioradialis. And the insertion is going to be inserted into the back of the second metacarpal bone, dorsal aspect of the second metacarpal bone. Okay? So this is the extensor carpi radialis longus. If I wanted to look to the action, because it crossed the behind the wrist joint, so it will perform extension of the wrist joint. This is extensor carpi radialis longus, going to be inserted into the back of the second metacarpal bone, so it crosses behind the wrist joint, so its action will be help in the extension of the wrist joint. Okay, and the other action will be radial deviation or abduction of the hand at the wrist joint. As you see, this is extensor carpi radialis longus. We will rotate the model posteriorly like this to look to its action. So it perform abduction or radial deviation of the hand. The next muscle or the third muscle is also containing radialis ward. It's called extensor carpi radialis brevis. Extensor carpi radialis brevis. I will show the muscle. Its attachment is so easily the common extensor origin, which is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and the insertion will be at the back of the third metacarpal bone, just beside the extensor carpi radialis longus. So here, the insertion of extensor carpi radialis brevis, it will be the same as extensor carpi radialis longus because it crosses behind or posterior to the wrist joint. So the action will be extension of the wrist. And this is our muscle, which is extensor carpi radialis brevis going to the back of the third metacarpal bone. And the next action will be also abduction or radial deviation of the hand and the wrist joint as you see abduction or radial deviation of the hand and the wrist joint so you can notice from this model and from this action we can put a rule any radialis muscle can perform abduction or radial deviation of the hand we have in the anterior compartment flexor carpi radialis and we have in the posterior compartment extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis as you see extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis so it's very nice to put a rule that any radialis muscle either flexor or extensor will perform radial deviation or abduction of the hand Now, after we finished the three muscles present on the radial side of the forearm or in the lateral side of the forearm, we want to rotate our model to look to the back 
of the forearm or the dorsal aspect of the forearm to discuss the other three muscles which are acting on the digits extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi and extensor carbi ulnaris let's start by extensor digitorum when i look to its attachments i will find it attached also to the common extensor origin which is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus excellent and if i want to navigate to reach its insertion i will find it inserted into the extensor expansions of the medial forefingers what is this extensor expansion it's a fibrous expansion made by the tendons of uh, all muscles attached to the back of the medial forefingers it has three slips as you see the middle slip is attached to the middle phalanx and the two collateral slips are attached to the distal phalanx posteriorly of course so we have the extensor digitorum muscle is attached to the extensor expansion of the medial forefingers which is attached to the back of middle and the distal phalanges of the medial forefingers so the action of this muscle will be so simply it crosses behind the wrist joint so it will perform again and again extension of the wrist joint and this is the muscle extension of the wrist joint okay it's very easy and very nice to demonstrate and also as it crosses all joints of the medial four fingers posteriorly so it will perform extension of the medial four fingers as you see extension of the medial four fingers as you see this is extensor digitorum so it extends all joints of the medial four fingers as it's attached to the extensor expansion of these fingers okay very nice after extensor digitorum as you see we have extensor digiti minimi because it acts only on the little finger and if i wanted to talk about its attachments it's very nice to see this muscle alone like this you will find it's attached also to the lateral epicondyle of the humerus which is the common extensor origin and is going to be attached to the extensor expansion of the little finger and will fuse with the tendon of the extensor digitorum going to this little finger so the extensor expansion of the little finger receives extensor digitorum and receives also extensor digiti minimi and look again to the extensor expansion with its middle slip to the middle finger or middle phalanx sorry and the collateral slips to the distal phalanx so the action will be extension of all joints of this little finger extensor digiti minimi is extension of all joints of the sorry of the little finger let's let's look to the muscle and let's select it like this extensor digiti minimi it's very nice and it's very clear that it will extend all joints of the little finger let's go now to the most medial muscle present in the back of the forearm which is extensor carbi ulnaris and from its name carbi so it will not reach to the phalanges it will be attached to the carpal and metacarpal bones extensor carbi ulnaris is attached to the common extensor origin which is the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and also it's attached to the posterior border of the ulna through the ulnar aponeuroses so this is the first origin and this is the second origin let's navigate to reach the insertion it's going to be inserted into the back of the fifth metacarpal bone the back of the fifth metacarpal bone to compensate for flexor carpi ulnaris anteriorly so this muscle crosses behind the wrist joint as you see so its action will be of course extension of the wrist joint extension of the wrist joint so this is extensor carpi ulnaris muscle its action will be extension of the wrist joint with all muscles crossing behind the wrist in the back of the forearm and another action will be adduction of the hand or ulnar deviation of the hand adduction of the hand or ulnar deviation of the hand this is 
extensor carpal ulnus and it's very nice to put another rule for ulnar deviation or for adduction of the hand which is any ulnaris muscle can perform adduction or uh, ulnar deviation of the hand at the wrist joint so we have flexor carpi ulnaris anteriorly and extensor carpi ulnaris posteriorly so any ulnaris muscle can perform adduction of the hand or ulnar deviation of the hand at the wrist joint and on the contrary we have uh, on the other hand any radialis muscle can perform radial deviation or abduction of the hand at the wrist joint and finally we have our last small muscle short muscle present just behind the elbow triangular in shape which is called anconius and to see the attachments of this anconius it's very nice to see that it's attached to the back of the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and going to be inserted into the olecranon process of ulna and also to the uh, uh, upper part of the posterior surface of the ulna and as you see it crosses behind the elbow joint so its action will be very easily extension of the elbow joint this is anconius muscle it performs extension of the elbow joint as you see okay okay very nice and here we reached the end of our demonstration about the muscles of the superficial group of the back of the forearm or the extensor compartment of the back of the forearm don't forget that they are arranged at the following from lateral to medial we have three muscles present on the radial side of the forearm containing the word radialis and we have three muscles on the dorsal aspect of the forearm uh, acting on the fingers uh, extensor digitorum extensor digit minimi and the most medial one is extensor carpi alnaris and don't forget the short small triangular one behind the elbow and here we reach the uh, uh, end of our video until we meet again inshallah in the next video to talk about the deep layer of the back of the forearm uh, goodbye and good luck for you all